many times we fall into being a part-time Muslim and that doesn't work and there are many shapes and forms of this trend there are people who are good Muslims when they come to the masjid they observe the prayers they come to the masjid they dress up as nicely as possible and as close to Islamic cultures as possible they try to be behave as a Muslim as as much as of a Muslim as possible but when they go home they show different colors they start maybe abusing their spouse neglecting their children acting as a tyrant that's a part-time Muslim and that's something that doesn't please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Prophet sallallahu pointed out that Islam cannot be compartmentalized it cannot be fragmented into independent segments submission to Allah belief in Allah love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seep, seeps into or leaks into every area of your life but if there are areas of your life where Allah's instructions are not there that shows that there is something with the essence some some trouble with the essence and you need to address the issue sometimes there are people who come to the masjid they are the most sincere the most practicing devout Muslim but when it comes to their financial dealings they have no issue cheating taking advantage of customers getting into dubious uh, transactions or falling into riba or maybe consuming haram material they're okay with that that's another type of part-time Muslims there are Muslims who worship Allah in Ramadan other than Ramadan they don't care they only probably come to Jum'a ah. that's if they ever come to the masjid they come to Jum'a ah. and in Ramadan they become Muslims another part-time Muslim and that shows lack of submission lack of trust in Allah lack of willingness to put yourself down for Allah and that's extremely problematic because Islam is either full-time or it's a very weak kind of relationship that you have with Allah and it's, that's going to transpire in every aspect of your life and if someone seems to be very strong in one area and in another area of Islam very negligent that shows that the area in which they are strong either Islam gives instructions that are convenient to them and that match their desire or they are wearing a mask in that area and making a show and these are serious issues that every person should hold themselves accountable for we should always keep ourselves in check because there's nothing more deceptive than two things shaitan and the nafs these are the, the two most deceptive creation of Allah. Shaitan and the nafs. You think yourself the most righteous person on earth and you don't realize that yourself is dragging you into the path of the hellfire. And it beautifies things for you. And Allah told, said many times in the Quran, And thus we have beautified for every people their deeds, their attitudes. And that's something about humans. Humans always are impressed with what they do. We are blind to our mistakes. We are blind to, our cult, to, to the mistakes in our culture. Once we blend into something, we're blind to it. We can't see what's wrong with it. Same thing applies to our own mistakes. They're beautified, our self beautifies our mistakes for us. And they seem to be great and that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned against in Surah Al-Kahf a verse that we all know towards the end of Surah Al-Kahf shall we not inform you of the biggest greatest losers on the day of judgment those are the ones who thought they were doing well when in reality their deeds were wasted the deeds were not optimal they were not good they were not accepted deeds obviously because something some some subtle mistake something like that so we want to be aware of this part-time Muslims there are people who observe the rituals of Islam 
Like they're so meticulous when it comes to the salah, when it comes to wudu, when it comes to the fast, when it comes to zakah, when it comes to ritualistic aspects of Islam. They are so keen, so sincere, and they are so unrelenting, unrelenting in that sense. Zero tolerance to any kind of departure of the best in this area. But then you find these people when it comes, especially the, the ritualistic, these are the visible actions. But when it comes to the actions of the heart, they don't even care. You find that in their hearts they have hate. They have contempt and disdain to others. They have jealousy, envy. They wish bad for others. And they don't see any issue with that. There's no problem with this for them. They don't realize that these sins as Imam Ibn Qayyim says in his book, Madarij al-Salikin, these sins are greater than the kaba'ir if they are persistent. These sins, if they remain, if the person has them, harbors them in, the, in his heart or her heart, and this becomes their way, they are more serious than the major sins than the kaba'ir. And he says many of those seemingly righteous people are guilty of these major sins, greater sins of the heart that will definitely take a person to the hellfire. What does this mean? This means we have to keep ourselves in check. Don't ever feel safe about yourself. Don't ever trust yourself and how it depicts itself to you. Don't ever do that. There are people, and this is, so this is a part-time Muslim. When it comes to rituals, they are devout Muslims. But when it comes to the acts of the heart, they are far from Islam, part-time Muslim. Another part-time Muslim is someone who worships Allah in public, but in private, they violate all the limits of Allah. Another part-time Muslim. And a very grave sign. A very grave sign. And that means this person cares about other people's opinion more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They want to please others and they don't care about the fact that Allah is watching them the moment they are engaging in sin, the moment they are violating His commands. And that's serious. Who of us is free from this? Who among us? We have no saints here, no prophets here. We're all guilty of that. And that means we have to hold ourselves accountable. The Prophet wasallam, the best of humanity, the best of creation. He was humble all the time. He was more sincere when he was by himself in private than he was in public. He was better with his family and his wives and he exerted more effort than, than him being even in public. Although in public he reached the, 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 the highest levels of good character. And the Prophet ﷺ many times in, di in different occasions and in many ways he indicated that we should not be a part-time Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ, for example says, خيركم, أو خيركم, خيركم the best among you are the best to their families. So you might be a nice person in public, a very considerate, courteous person, respectful, you treat people well, you get out of your way to help other people. But what about the closest ones to you, your children? Do they get your time? Do they get quality time from you? What about your wife? Does she get quality? Does she get good treatment? Are you aware of her challenges? Are you aware of her pains and her burdens? Do you make an effort to share some of her pains? Do you make an effort to realize what she's going through? The same applies to the wife. Do you know what your husband goes through? Do you know how much he suffers? Do you try to share his burden, lessen his burden? Or are you someone who's just always heaping demands on him and expectations? The kids as well, our, our youth. Are you thankful to your parents? Are you grateful? Do you realize how much they have sacrificed for you, your mother? Your father, are you aware how much they have done for you? Or are you just this kind of arrogant person who, who feels entitled that they want everyone and everything in the, in the universe to serve them? We can't be part-time Muslims. You're either with Allah, you're either moving to Allah or further from Allah. There's no other, there's no other direction. There's no other choice. That's it. Are they getting closer to Allah or further from Allah? And you have to always hold yourself accountable. 
You obey Allah, you obey Him everywhere. Every time, with everyone, in every aspect of your life. External, internal, your heart, your deeds, your finances, your rituals, everything. You worship Allah. At work and at home, the same thing. In the market, the same thing. There's no time where you take a vacation from Islam or a break from Islam. There's no place where you can detach from Islam temporarily. It doesn't work. Because our mission in life is to find our way to Allah and follow Him. And everything in your life should be part of this way. So if anything in this way takes you backward, then you need to get rid of it or you need to fix it. And if it brings you closer to Allah, whether it's your work, whether it's your role as a husband, as a wife, even as a child or as a sibling, as an employee or as an employer or as a neighbor or as a member of society, in any capacity you are in, big or small, full time or part time, it needs to be part of the way that leads you to Allah. And in the life of the Muslim, there is nothing without a purpose. It has to bring you to Allah because if it doesn't bring you to Allah, it holds you back from Allah if it doesn't push you even further. So Islam is a full commitment. And it's not cherry picking process. And it's not a selective process. It is full obedience because that's the very word of Islam is submission. You submit yourself to Allah. You don't even belong to yourself. You hand yourself over to Allah. And that makes you the best of humans. Not as a claim, not as a, as a slogan, but nothing brings the best in humans but devotion to the Creator of the heavens and the earth. Nothing brings the morality that is built in within us other than knowing why we're here in this world.